The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here, Tiger Technicians. Oh, what did, we, oh, what did I do there? Whoops, uh, cancel. Um, sorry, let me do this again. What I was going to type was an Eiffel Tower. That's one of the Chapman Wave techniques that we like to look at here. Tower A failure pattern. All right, let's just talk patterns for a moment. This is what we're looking at. Made a peak after the one minute E mini chart right there at 42, what was that? 4205 ish. Come plummeting down in leg E to the downside in the one minute chart. This is only a leg A after an A failure. So, what do I talk about? There's a pattern that looks like an uppercase A, goes straight, Eiffel Tower goes straight up and then straight down and fails, and that becomes an A minus. Not a good sign. So I said to subscribers this morning, much more cautious. Uh, we did buy the um, UDAL yesterday for a trade, but I got out of it very tiny, what, a three times long position, and we get on less than, uh, about a 1% loss. That's amazing. But I am looking at this and saying, I think this is the moment that we've got to become cautious. There are a number of reasons for it. And let me just go through them one by one. Um, first of all, the Dow has been the laggard. But to see the Dow making lower lows and lower highs in this arch formation, and in the weekly chart, this, this arch that becomes an M-shaped pattern. Let me show you. See this roll over here, then it hits the midpoint, and then it rolls over again. Well, have a look at this. It's a pattern that repeats over and over and over. Look, yes, crude oil. Uh, crude, where was that? Crude oil of the day did the same thing. Arch and arch. See, I've got to be really careful here. I like to see the Dow leading. Um, if it's not leading, it's, it needs to be participating in this, in this particular uh, moment. We've got a Dow that was being failing since the 34,257, uh, May the 1st high. Here we are a month later, and we've gone from 34,257 to 32,814. Hey, just about a 2,000-point uh, decline. That's It's not a big deal or less than that. But it, it's not a big deal. But it's a big deal if you start to look at it this way. Look, the S&P is making a peak D as we speak. If there's no new high about 4231.10, which was yesterday's high, we were waiting for that D. It came in. Now we've got a peak D. At a peak D, other things can happen in the Chapman Wave methodology. We've got a rising trend line. This narrowing wedge formation says that if the S&P closes under 31, uh, what was that? 31. I can't see it exactly. Right there. If it closes under 41, I'd say 60. And we're at 41.81 right now. You've got to start being careful because that left side low of five, uh, the 25th of May is going to be uh, somewhat tough to, um, well, it could be tested very quickly. So there are a couple of things going on. I'm going to go through the different. Uh, right now, perfect timing because we've got John in fully. John, how are you? Basil, I am uh, doing very well. Uh, I see Good. you're doing the same. That trip of yours sounded just lovely. Yeah, it was actually fascinating. And uh, in fact, I wanted to take a picture. I took a picture of um, a, a tennis player that I play with because there was in in uh, one of the counties, there was a store and it had his name printed on this uh, on the on the building. It was a shop. And I thought it would be good to take it back. And then I saw another one, and it had John Cheney. And I thought, oh, I should take a picture. And then I thought, no, nah, I'll just tell him about it. So you're, you're famous. You're all over the world. Yeah, it was really yeah, well, beautiful. Yeah, the, uh, uh, certainly uh, my surname, uh, the ancestry, uh, dates back to England, no doubt. And uh, it, we were in uh, Salisbury, different parts of, of uh, um, Britain. Uh, we were in London, but we also went off for about four or five days along the coast of Chesil Beach. 
and that's where that that's Dorset and Portland, all the all the all the familiar names from here in the Boston area. Um, you've got uh, Weymouth, uh, Weymouth, all the names that are familiar. But it was so beautiful, just it was really just pretty, and uh, it was great. So, John, well, what are we looking at? Uh, John, no, no, you're, you're cracking I'd up like a little bit. It's about it's, two names, uh, NVIDIA and Avago, that's your Broadcom today, AVGO. Uh, clearly, those uh, stocks have rallied huge. And my question is, could, um, could you please go over both those names, NVIDIA and Broadcom, AVGO, and just share with us or show us uh, I'm watching on Tiger TV. Show us the daily and the weekly charts and uh, your Chapman Wave counts and answer this question. Is there Rest anything the in your work uh, on those two names that suggest to you important tops in, in either or both are imminent or alternatively, if these surges are likely to make it to higher highs in the fullness of time? So those are my two questions. I appreciate that. I'll take it offline. Okay. Thank you, John. Those are absolutely fabulous questions because I was doing work on just these stocks uh, over the last two days. And so, uh, so first of all, I don't like it ever when a company changes its name. I mean, Mondelez, you remember that change was a full Morris, uh, those guys. Uh, then there was another, then you had um, uh, Facebook change its name to Meta. Google changes its name uh, to Alphabet. I, I don't know why they do that. And also the names just never click. The original names are the names Broadcom. That was Broadcom. All right. So Broadcom has the symbol AVGO. I think they took over a, 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 a VGO, uh, but they kept the symbol and kept the name at the same time. So trading at 801.56. So this is the semiconductor area. And let me go through this. On the right side is the monthly chart. It extended a huge, in May alone, it went straight up to a leg D and is now in a leg D. And it means that in the entire month of June, if there's no new high above 921.78, that was yesterday's high, it then makes a peak D in the monthly. That's number one. The technicals, the MACD is good, stochastics at 82%, the on-balance volume is a little bit overbought, the 9 is over the 14. All the technicals are there to say um, the confirmation of the rally with the month ending today is in place. It doesn't say the confirmation of the rally should keep going. It just says at this particular moment, everything's in place to confirm that you had the technicals elevated to the point where they were confirming the very sharp price spike. In the weekly chart, it's exactly the same thing. There's one difference, and that this extension has gone to a leg F. I can give it an alternate count. I see no reason at this point to give it an alternate count because it could still pull back, make a new high and go to a G. If there's no new high next week, above 921.78. I should even say this week because we've still got two and a half days to go. We've got a break coming up and I want to spend just a moment on this because I'm going to include the SMHs here to show you that you need to put the whole pie together. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 238, S&P's down 27. We're looking at the semiconductor index. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. So this is now a really difficult uh, situation for those people who want to do, like fund managers, who want to increase or want to have AI or semiconductors in their portfolio what do you do now? That's exactly the same question that should be asked if you are long. What do you do now? That's a much easier uh, answer because all I would say is you have to, you have no choice. Money management says there's been a spectacular run. You, I usually say take a little bit off. I would say take a lot more than a little bit off. I would take... If you, if you have enough in your portfolio, I would definitely take something like a third off. Why? Because if we go higher, no matter what happens, however high we go from here, the whole area, say for NVIDIA at 390 right now, having made a high yesterday of 419, was it 419 or 420? 419.38. Let me just type that in here. 419.38. Is that... At some point, it'll be right back here in the 390s. So at this the, at this stage, just money management. Not even saying um, uh, this is this is something that I want to hold for three years or five years. It, it's got nothing to do with that. It has a, a, a situation where the gap from the 300 area to the 370s, 360s, 370s. That gap is huge and gaps on the upside I always say gaps on the when you're coming off a low you don't have to fill those gaps I mean we've got gaps in March 2009 that some of them haven't been filled in so March 2009 uh, at the low yes um, but this is different gaps to the upside at some point become a focal point so that's number one now number one is what do you do if you're a fund manager and number two is, or if you have a really good position and you now want to add to that position because you have a longer term outlook that's bullish. The second is, regardless of what happens, if you're in earlier on, this is the moment that you, just money management says, take something off. You don't have to take everything off, just take more than a little bit off. So that's, that's the, th the second. The third is, what do you do if... 
two two aspects are, are involved. One is you're using it as a benchmark for the market, and that's what I'll be talking about tonight uh, when I speak to the Boston Investors Group uh, meetup as a guest uh, speaker. It's free. It's uh, just go to the front page of uh, just Google it. Go to Boston Investors Group meetup, and it'll be there for tonight. Basil Chapman, guest speaker, March the 31st, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. <clears throat> And this is what I'm going to try to resolve over the period of the day so that I can articulate a little bit better. So the aspect now of what happens if you're not in, but it's an area you would like to get into, there's no choice. I don't think you have a choice. You have to wait. Uh, you can buy an option, but I'm not getting into options. That's something else completely different. I'm saying if you, you have to wait. For NVIDIA, this leg to the upside is confirmed in every way technically, in every way, but emotionally. So the emotional side says, wait a minute, what is that monthly chart? Is that a G or is that an A? A G says, oh my God, you better sell everything because this is, when it comes down, it's going to come down hard. A says, are you kidding? That means we've got another for the entire year. It's a monthly chart. You can't, you can't get to a D. Uh, unless every other month you go up and down and new highs and then make a peak and then another high and make a peak. So that takes you seven seven months. So do we have seven months left? Uh, yes, we do. So uh, just about. So all I can say is that this is a moment to be taking something off now on a purely technical aspect. The on balance volume in NVIDIA monthly chart is overbought. That's the only thing I use as an overbought or oversold uh, technical tool. The stochastic, even getting to 98%, 99%, I'd say that is extremely positive. And all you can expect is that over time, it's going to be coming down to the 70% level, uh, but it can stay here for a while. So that's very really different because that's not a timing method. That's just saying, yes, you should go down on the stochastic at some point with the price. Timing says on balance volume in the monthly chart says it's overbought, but you can't talk about it until you look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart says, whoops, overbought. Look at that blue line there. But the stochastic's flat at 93%. That is really positive, so, but it's been there for quite a while, so it could be ready to turn down. The other aspect is the uh, daily chart on balance volume is extremely overbought and he's pulling back a little bit today. So all I can say is upside looks limited to me. <clears throat> That's not to say you couldn't have isolated sudden bursts. I mean, what happens if uh, the, the, the whole deficit, the whole, sorry, the whole uh, budget aspect is resolved to the point where the market says, phew, that's out of the way. Let me have a little bit of a rally. That could happen at any point. But we've also got inflation. We've got a whole bunch. There's always something. You remember, I've got this chart right here. This is the chart that says, hey, just don't forget that we have uh, right there. We have this looming at the top, this dark cloud that looms as, as a kind of a, a cautionary uh, thing that says the dark news cloud cover will constantly um, embrace bad news. And that will be a market cap. So that's this big rectangle over here. All right. And that says we're, we're ready for anything to come down. But we don't. that doesn't mean to say we're going to smash to the downside. We could rotate to the downside. But the one area I thought could help us is not going to help us. And that was the financial. So here we go. Question on NVIDIA. I'd say that the 360s, it's a 391 right now. The 360s will be the real test of whether or not NVIDIA is going to spring back and go to higher highs or whether this is, I, this is not, people are comparing it to the top in 2000. You know, in the top in 2000, you had everyone, no matter where you went, if you were standing at the bank waiting to, to, to deposit something, there were people talking about uh, the stock market. Wherever you went, the barber shop had a TV on that had, uh, you remember those days you could get it, uh, it was TFNN, -N, no, T, T, Tiger, no, it wasn't, it was Financial News Network. That I used to be able to get that as a TV show just running uh, without any payment. Um, it was everywhere. This is very different. This is a momentary thing that says, oh my God, we've gone hysterical towards AI. So I'm saying to you, NVIDIA represents, this is the benchmark, 
and it's starting to pull back. It's only just barely begun. It hasn't even got to where it was three days ago. So it's just the start of something. If you look at, um, uh, what was the other one? In uh, the, uh, uh, Where do we go? Oh, that was the, the Broadcom, and I'll, I'll go to that in a moment. And that said, where are we? Uh, AVGO. Yeah, there we are. Uh, AVGO, but you've got to type it in the right place. AVGO. And that, that was a specific question. Where's NVIDIA going? And what's a, a Broadcom doing? AVGO is the symbol. And that says 921 was the high. Just a couple of days ago, it was trading the 740, 750 area. It's at 802. I suspect that the gap at about 742 to 738, that gap is going to be filled. Um, and I think that we are on the way to at least doing some of that over the next week or two. I think this beginning of June is going to be rather shaky. I'll talk about the SMHs when we return, plus other things. The Dow's now down. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, boys, before I go any further, uh, thank you, Tommy, uh, putting it in the den. Will O'Neill passed away this weekend. In the next hour on Tiger TV, since Steve Rose is out, we'll be replaying a show from 2014 where he spent the hour with Tom Askbull on TF TFNN. I remember that well. I met him just very, I mean, just, uh, I can't say I met him. He shook my hand. Uh, way back when he was in Boston in the 1980s to promote Investors Business Daily, I, I'd always said, 
the, the Wall Street Journal once in a while will put a chart in, and, and here comes a guy and everything is filled up with charts. He talks technical analysis. Brilliant man, brilliant man. He took uh, a, an idea, he built it into a, into a business because he had the, the veracity, he had proved it by his own portfolio. And it, it, was, it was really, a, for the people in the financial area, I, I remember I, at the time I was doing, a, um, uh, I had Fidelity as a client, and um, they were so slow to pick up on technical analysis there. Yeah, the, the, the head technicians who I worked for, uh, who I you know, did work for, um, uh, did technical analysis. That's what they were there for. But the majority of fund managers never did it. And he... he he produced an instrument that was visual, it was emotional, it was technical, it was impactful, and I think it it helped literally millions of, of uh, people in the financial world. And for that, I think uh, this tr most tremendous respect and uh, really a fantastic innovator. And he, he produced the goods, and he produced it every day. To this day, it's sort of a, a fantastic uh, investment paper, IBD. So, yeah, thank you, Tommy. So, um, yeah, and uh, a very nice, well, I can't say I didn't, I never speak to him. I heard him talking, but I've never spoken to him personally. But Tom did, and he was very amiable. He was very modest, um, very nice. So, okay, back to here. So we're looking at Avagio. Uh, is was was the company taken over by Broadcom? AVGO is a symbol. Uh, it's not failing. It had a spectacular session yesterday. One of the biggest candles it's ever had in its history. Uh, all I can say is that I don't think it's all over for the for semiconductor industry. I think this is just an already overbought situation, and they'll be back. Will they test the highs? I'm going to say yes. I know that's a little controversial, having had such a spectacular move. And will they test the highs this year? I'm going to say yes. Okay, so with that said, I just want to show you, look, advanced micro devices, spectacular move, pulling back very modestly from yesterday's move down three at 122. When I say modestly, I mean... Uh, just in terms of the patterns, the technicals are still very strong. There's a leg E in the weekly, a leg uh, C, wait a moment, A, B, there it is. A leg C in the, yeah, leg C in the monthly chart. I think it will t try to test the all-time highs at some point and probably this year. Uh, what was the other one? I don't, oh, applied materials, applied materials. Uh, also very strong pulling back sharply today. Yeah. And peak E, they're all making peak D E or, or something in the in the after a, a D or later, and that says they're ready for a pullback. And I'm going to call it a pullback at this point. I'm not going to call it a a, a crash or anything like that because I still see. Look how steady. Look at the. Look, it's had many of these moves before. If you look at Applied Materials weekly chart, it's done a left side, right side price time match. The target I'd had, I didn't. We don't have this, but I'm saying that I'd drawn in was 142 was the high back in the week of the 1st of April of 2022. And now it, it had a high just the other day of 140, sorry, 138.80. So it just missed it. And it's still got uh, it's still got another couple of weeks to go for a left side, right side price time match. So yeah, I like this very much, but I'm just saying, I think that it's appropriate to take something off you can always put that back, and we will talk over the next couple of weeks, couple of weeks or so, where would be an appropriate place to be putting money back to work there. I don't want to go through the others. I'm just saying this is the area. It's an area that, that qualifies because the QQQ <clears throat> has had the same move. It's broader because it isn't just – it's tech. It isn't just uh, semiconductors. So it's pulling back. It had a target. I had the target of 334 for the three weeks ago, it went right through that. And the high yesterday was 354, was it? Three, 353.93. So 353, I'm going to type this in, 353. 
Okay, so that that's there, and and the other thing I want to look at is XLK, and I'll be talking about that. I'll be talking about this tonight, but I'll make it much much more abbreviated because the deed has been done. We had made this high, and we are pulling back. So this is a digestive phase we're looking at, looking at the. Uh, um, XLK because it's much broader. It's S and P Select Tax Spider Fund doing really. This is the one that says to me that 177.04, the high of the December of 2021. I think we're going there in the year 2023. We're going to test that. We might be extended now, which means some part of this first part of June might be real shaky, and then perhaps we start at the end of June, beginning of July, start moving up again. That's the way I'm looking at the market overall. Um, now I want to do something else. So Tommy was in his show, the uh, morning market kickoff. Uh, Tommy was talking about um, AAP. So AAP is down just a little bit today. It's just down 32%, down 36 points at 75. Advanced order pass made a peak E way back in 22, uh, around about January or so, 240 area, and now it's at 75. So this is something that's really important. Let me just go through this because it's part of what I'll talk about tonight. The reason why I'm, I do not like what's going on in the market right now, especially since the financials are actually deteriorating at this particular point. You know, with yields going higher, the banks should actually be profiting, uh, but they're not. And that makes me kind of nervous. So AAP is advanced uh, auto parts, and it's kind of telling us about the market and about the economy in many ways. So there's another one that I'd like to look at. AZO is um, AutoZone. It made a peak E doji candle. I spoke about this some time ago. And it's, oh, I forgot all about this. I, I, I'm looking at the daily chart, looking at the daily chart, saying, whoa, look at those huge gaps. Stocks that make two big gaps to the downside, they're kind of done. They take a long time to fill those gaps. So this is auto zone, auto parts. I forgot about this. I typed in here, unconventional flat base restart back to the 2320s. And the reason was, there's a tech, I don't want to go into that right now, maybe technical Friday I'll do that. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, oh, and I'll be doing my show tomorrow at eight o'clock to nine o'clock. I have an appointment I couldn't change, so that's uh, that they made it a little difficult for me, but I'll do eight to nine tomorrow. So I it says that if it goes in three bars above D, it's an instant po possible instant restart. But if it keeps coming back to the low of the trough that made the peak D, be careful because that can, especially if it takes out that low, it needs to keep going higher. But at some point you're going to make a high that whoops, goes go right through this 2320s. And here it is right now, 20, 2300. Amazing how that works. I forgot all about it. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Trap and Tiger Ignition's Hour Dow's down 270. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. 
Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So the futures are down 36. So the softness, the speed of pulling back. Uh, tells us that some profit taking is here and that gee, the gee, like, beginning of June, first couple of weeks might be kind of choppy. In fact, I'm expecting it will be choppy. So a question about Ruzi, Ruzi core, smart glasses, augmented reality has these sudden U-shaped spikes, big spike up and then it pulls back sharply and then has another spike to the upside. This is leg C and it's pulling back below the 200 period moving average. I wouldn't be surprised that if it goes down below 4.60, and kind of test the 420 area, and then maybe in the low fours, it suddenly picks up strength and goes to a leg D. But you might have to wait to keep you look at the, the you, have, you have about a week or so in between each spurt to the upside. So let me go back to what we were looking at here. So the other one is Orly, O R L Y. Uh, Orly, I haven't finished notating it. So this is a leg C, a G slash C in the week, in the monthly chart. Let me just finish this up here. A G slash C, O'Reilly Automotive. This is an E, a peak E already in place in the weekly chart. All the technicals are very good in the monthly and the uh, weekly, the daily technicals. So this is a D, and that becomes an E right here. Ha, huh. this is interesting. E right there. Is this going to be one of those cases where we actually have Oops, a, a failure pattern? Yes, it could be. So look at this. We've got E. There's never an H, remember? So E, that's F slash B. Look at this, F slash B. Uh, no, that can't be because that was way too deep. So that has to be. Yes, yes, yes. So that's a G slash C and a D right there. But that's only because of the same thing we were looking at before, that this is a Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart. Once you took out that low, uh, if you with the MACD so strong, you want to keep the count going alphabetically, goes to a D, plummets and it takes out the left side low. So that's an unconventional flat base restart. It, it, it's something if you have to do many times and then all of a sudden you just pick it up by eye. That's the reason why for, was it AZO? I typed this in ages ago. There was another one we were doing the other day and I said, oh my goodness, I haven't even seen it. I typed it in and I haven't looked at it for a long time. It was a daily chart. Can't remember what it was. Unconventional flat base restart. And that says if you take out after an instant restart, keep taking out, but keep rallying to higher highs. This is one that says, be careful, because at some point you're going to smash below the trough, and that's exactly what we did there. All right, enough with that. Let's just go to where we are. What, what are we looking at here? So we are, we are long for subscribers to my opening call. We've been long for quite a while. Bots. 
Bots now has had a big move down, 2.3%, down 64 cents at 27.16. Hit 28, round number high with a doji candle. That to me always says, uh-oh, be careful. And it's a GSAS-C in the daily chart. Um, leg E right at the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. Resistance in the weekly chart. Monthly chart is leg B and the technicals have improved. So this is going to be a very necessary pullback. But it's not. I don't think it's the end at all. I think, in fact, uh, the all-time high was in the 40 area, 40 point something. Oh, 39.99. I remember now. It missed it by one penny. Let me just type that in. That's funny. 39. Come on, 39.99. Give me a round number. All right, that was somewhere in. I'll, I'll call it January for now. One, two, oh, two, three, uh, two. That's right. Okay. So uh, in the meantime, back at the ranch, this is in play. BOTS is the Global X Robotics and AI ETF. That's why I'm saying this has got nothing to do with uh, 20, with the year 2000, the dot-com bubble. This, I mean, if anybody lived through that, you will know that if you looked out your window, even you if you were on a farm somewhere, in the sky, someone there's a, a plane would be putting the Dow Jones or the the Nasdaq symbols in clouds. I mean, it was every you could not go anywhere without the word stock market. Well, the word stock market um, being discussed. People were talking about having made thousands and thousands in the 9:15 to to 9:30 on stocks that we mentioned as takeovers, with some almost doubled in the 15 minutes between, before the bell the, start, the bell opened. So this has nothing to do with that. It's a microcosm, and it has the same effect. And that says, be ready for some kind of a digestive phase, and that's what's going on. Now, I do want to do this XLF. I had some questions about, uh, about the financials. Look, the XLF had a chance yesterday of just showing some strength. It did show a little bit of relative strength. It's given it all back today. And it's making the pattern that I call the dreaded H uh, potential in the weekly chart after a peak A. I'm always very cautious about that. And that's just, this is another reason why I said to subscribers, no new, no new positions, uh, stock positions, but we will be looking at the potential to, um, we, 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 there's the potential to um, look at more shorts. Uh, okay, another question came in, and this this goes back to, you remember I spent a whole, like, I must have been two segments of a show, and then I repeated it again the following day on Ulta Beauty. Ulta Beauty, I said, this is the last area of, of where people go to for their beauty to keep, you know, just to look good, and if they don't give it up until the cost just gets too high. Well, this is telling me you've got to be careful between this and AZO or a, a, AARP between the the spare parts. Uh, does that mean people are buying more cars? Well, if you look at Ford, I wouldn't say that. Ford's struggling. If you look at General Motors, I wouldn't say that. General Motors is struggling. Uh, this just tells me even Tesla um, is down towards the lows. It's had a very nice rally, but look at this monthly chart. So this is just, and it's in a different area altogether. You can really consider it still more a, a technology area than anything else. So I'm just looking at this, I'm saying, I've got to be ready now for some kind of a decline um, that's going to impact the market in, in a different way. And I thought it could be a rotational correction, but now I'm saying if the XLF, uh, and we did have KRE, we took a, a, sm a small loss today, it acted a little bit. I just thought regionals, someone's got to save these regionals, S&P regional banking ETF. So when I put, I'm going to put this whole potpourri together, I'm just saying I'm not happy with what's going on because these are areas that should be working. If you look at the IAI, that's the brokerage uh, and dealer and security ETF, not good. And look, Schwab still hasn't taken out the 45 round number low. Uh, it's at 52.70, but this is really not bullish. Oh, it's very nice going from 45 to 55, 10 points. That's, I mean, that's 18% uh, in a rally, in a bounce. But it's just not showing the kind of strength that you would expect. So that just says to me, 
on a very short-term basis, um, I'm becoming a lot more precious. Looking out, it's getting harder and harder to pick the areas that are showing enough strength right now to come from the dead, sorry about that, to come alive. They're not showing that kind of strength and we have to wait to see when that happens. I'll be back in a moment, Basil Chapman. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. It's Golden Sun. IPKR is one that I love. Uh, we don't have any position in it, but I, I love it only because. Uh, they've shown better relative strength than most of the others as interactive brokers, but they're also pulling back. So we've just got to be real careful. Let me just do this. Uh, tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, I'll show it right here, uh, the Boston Investors uh, Group Virtual Meeting Preparing for the Next Few Months by Basil. I'm the guest speaker. Uh, that is uh, Wednesday, May the 31st, 2023, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Boston Investors Group Meeting. Virtual meetup via Zoom. Note the Zoom link will be visible by registrants on the uh, thing. So this one says actually 41 attendees have signed up. It's actually more like 70 or 80 people have signed up. This is from the other day. So you just click to attend and you should be able to do that. And I, what happens is I get asked questions by this group because there are people that do a lot of fundamental and a lot of people that do technical. So I get asked questions sometimes that come out of left field and I have to think out of the box because it's not 
the way I usually think of those positions or the, that area. And, I, you know, we'll also discuss the commodities, how, look at this, uh, W, whoops, I, I did that in the wrong place. Um, the soft commodities have been pulling back really sharply. And that's kind of talking about deflation, and yet the, the rates are going up. So I'll be talking about the rates of commodities. I'll be talking about the semiconductors. I'll be giving a big, i you know, got an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I'll be covering a lot. And I'm also telling you, what, what, what am I anticipating for the next three months going into the fall? And that's going to be really important for me because that's the reason why I want to. So stay tuned. Great program coming up to a bull, late bull, bull O'Neill, fantastic uh, leader uh, who died at the age of 90 and uh, deepest thoughts to the family. And stay tuned, great programming, and hope to see you at 7 p.m. tonight. Otherwise, see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning.